Hey, welcome back to Survival of Creators for Beginners, and today we're covering the hurricane that has hit it our way. And this way here, everybody can be prepared. Now, this doesn't go for Florida. Everybody that lives in a hurricane-prone area, all these products do cover you, so make sure you pay attention if you just move to an area and you don't know what to do during a hurricane. Now, we're going to be starting right over here. You want to make sure that you do have dry goods, all different types of dry goods and canned goods because non-perishable items are key during a hurricane because, and not everybody has ways to power their home, generators, battery banks, they don't have all this type of stuff so you have to have some way to maintain your protein and nutrition during those periods because we do not know how long the storm will last we don't know how long the power could be out and any of these things so having all these different types of canned goods canned potatoes canned green beans beans uh, chicken corned beef hash tuna fish uh, pastas ramen noodles if you're a coffee drinker make sure that you have powdered milk so this way here if it's during the hurricane, you want to have coffee, use your Coleman stove. As I preach, I think everybody should have a Coleman stove in their home just on the chance of being prepared for different types of scenarios, no matter what they could be. And you can also use it for your recreational use. Make sure that you do have rice and all those different types of things. Speaking of your Coleman stove, if you're going to have a Coleman stove, make sure you do have extra gas cylinders. Now, these gas cylinders right here are only one pound. Depending on how much you're cooking is how long these things are going to last. So I would highly suggest that you go out and you buy yourself the adapter. And this way here, you can use the big 20-pound tank off your gas grill. You plug it from here, it plugs into here. And the next thing you know, now you've got 20 pounds of gas. It's going to last you for a very long time cooking on your Coleman stove. And you could also, if you wanted to, buy the adapter and you could run your gas grill and your Coleman stove at the same time. So this way here, you are staying prepared, you're staying ahead of the storm. Now, water. Storing water. You can store water in a variety of different ways. You want to make sure that you do have plenty of water. You need more water than you do need food. Alright, so storing it in one of these containers here, you can pick these up. Just about anywhere, like Home Depot, you can get them at a Walmart, Target. You can get them all over the place, folks. You can store in gallons. You buy gallons of water. Save your gallon water jugs and fill them up with water. You can buy bottled water, whatever else. Make sure that you do have some way to purify the water after the storm if, for some reason, your water system was compromised and those type of things. Something I would highly suggest, buy one of these. All right, this is a water bottle. Now what you do is, you take this, you put this thing in your bathtub. You fill it up with water inside your bathtub. It will hold up to 100 gallons of water. This one actually has a pump that connects right to the top. And the next thing you know, you have 100 gallons of water instantly right inside your bathtub, ready for you to use it at any given time. You may need water to also flush your toilet if they have turned your water off this way here. You can just kind of flush it right out. I would highly suggest if you do have maybe a lake, a stream, um, a retention pond, something like that, to draw your water out with buckets to flush your toilet and don't waste your water that you can drink and eat and cook with. Okay? So, before we go any further, one of the most important things that you have to remember and a lot of people forget about is having extra medicine or having your medicine on hand. Make sure you're going through your medicine now and making sure that you have enough to weather out the storm at least two weeks after the storm, depending on what takes place. We've all seen how long it can take for power to get back up, for people to get back in business and everything else. Make sure you have your meds, all right? Another thing is, have a plan. Your planner should already be filled out. You should have your evacuation routes written down. You should have alternate routes written down. All your important numbers that you need in case your cell phone isn't working and you have to use somebody else's cell phone or something, you have everything written down. Having on paper is a bonus, all right? So have all your important information in your planner. Now your important paperwork and stuff, you want to buy one of these bags right here. These bags are waterproof. These bags are fireproof. You store all your important documents in here, this way here, 
they are good to go. Now, along the lines of cooking, it wouldn't hurt to have a small little charcoal grill. All right, you can pick those things up for like 25 bucks and make sure that you always have extra bags of charcoal. This way here, it's another alternative so that you can be prepared for the storm. Now, like I said, this doesn't just pertain to Florida. This is for anybody in a hurricane area. We are talking about Florida right now because the storm is headed this way. Battery banks, power, you need power. So you need to have a generator, if you have a generator, you've got to have extra gas, extra oil, extra spark plugs. You're going to have to have all these things. And this way here, you can keep your generator running and all that type of stuff. But having battery banks is a key component that goes along with your generators. All right? Like this big boy right down here. This thing will power refrigerators. It'll power a freezer. It'll power a lot of things. Then you move up the line here. You've got a 330 watt and you have a 250 watt. These are power like a small fan, lights. These will also charge your cell phones, your laptops, iPads, uh, headlamps, flashlights, anything that can be rechargeable, you can recharge with these things here. As long as you have solar panels, you can take these things out because after the storm, boom, it's usually nice and sunny. And you can just charge these things right back up bring them back in the house and keep on using them. Speaking of information though, all right, you want to make sure that you do have some type of a radio. It can be any size of radio that you choose, but this way here you can get the local news and stuff that's going on around you. I would highly suggest people buy and spend just a little bit of money on buying a Bofang. For the simple fact is, all right, you can get no weather radio. And that is key because that will constantly broadcast, even if the radio stations go out, that comes through as part of the emergency broadcast system. All right? So you can find out what is going on right around you in your area, which is very important. Knowledge is key. Now, in case you do have to leave your home, you want to make sure that you do have a go bag. Have a go bag all packed, have it ready and get ready so you can walk out the door. A first aid kit, a good first aid kit, not a boo-boo kit, a good first aid kit is something that you want to make sure that you do have. You never know, you may be having to help somebody in your family, a neighbor, or whoever else during the storm, after the storm, or whatever it could be. When you start doing cleanup and stuff, people are bound to get cut on sharp objects or poked or anything else, so having a first aid kit so you can administrate first aid is a very vital key to making sure that everybody stays healthy and everybody stays well. All right? Coolers! Yes! Anyway, you might want to store your beer in there for, you know, but having coolers is a bonus. At this point in time, if you do have an extra freezer in your home, you want to try to move things around. So you can take one of the freezers and start freezing water. All right, now you can freeze it in bottled water. You can make your own locks with plastic dishes, however you want to do it. But this way here, when the storm hits or the power goes out, you start drawing out some of those blocks. You put those into your other freezer. You can put them into your refrigerator. Things that you're going to be using the most of, drinks, or in things of this nature, you put them in coolers. And this way here, you pack it full of ice, and you're not opening up your refrigerator, so you don't have to keep running your generator and your battery banks and everything else to keep those things cold. You use your coolers as a deterrent of opening up your refrigerator. Now, you see I have all these lights out right here, right? These battery-powered lights are priceless, all right? They run on AA batteries, two of them, all right, they do come with a timer, all right, anywhere from 2 to 12 hours. If you run it at 6 hours, these things will last for weeks, all right. So if you're running these things at nighttime, those, these things are going to last you for weeks. You can place them throughout your home, and this way here you have plenty of light and stuff, so you're not stumbling over something, you know, falling, hurting yourself, breaking your arm, whatever it may be. These things are excellent. Speaking of lights, right now, you want to make sure that you are going through and you are checking all your flashlights that you do have around your home. 
Make sure you're charging up all your flashlights that are, that are rechargeable, your headlamps, your flashlights, uh, radios, and all that kind of stuff. You can pick these little dinky lights up right here. You can get them at Walmart, you can get them at Target, Home Depot, whatever. They're, they're real cheap. They come in like a two-pack. I have seen them in a four-pack. They don't cost you a lot of money, but the cool thing is, is they have a hook on them. So you can take and you can hook these things to whatever you would like. You just hook them right up and voila. Now you have light wherever you're working and it's shining right there. You can see whatever you need to see. Now, if you do have your generator, key note here, people, if you have a gas generator, do not run it in your home, all right? Period. That is the biggest mistake everybody makes, and every time there's a hurricane, we all hear about the horror stories that happen because people die from carbon monoxide and because they had their generator running in their home. You want it as far away from any windows and doors and everything else as possible. So make sure that you do have a very long, good extension cord, all right? Now, some of these cords can set you back, you know, 40, 50 bucks. But having a good cord is worth its weight in gold because you can run it into your house, you can power up the things that you need, and nobody is going to die from carbon monoxide poisoning. Making sure that you have screws and nails and all that different type of stuff is also very vital because you may have to put something up over your window if something gets broke and everything else so you want to make sure that you do have that having tape eight different types of tape right from electrical tape regular duct tape really good duct tape whatever having those types of things are very crucial to your own survival because you never know what they could come in handy for from patching up pipes uh, glass um, electrical, if you do lose uh, part of your roof or something like that, you have open electrical, make sure you kill your breaker to your house. And this way here, you can tape up safely the ends so that when the power comes back on, it doesn't spark and catch a fire. All right, <clears throat> next thing, gloves. You will need gloves for cleanup afterwards. All right, so you don't know what you're going to be picking up. You don't know what you're going to be cleaning up. Having gloves is a must. You also want to make sure that you do have contractor bags, all right? These contractor bags are four mil. Now you can get them thicker and everything else, but you can use these for a lot of different things, from covering windows to picking up debris and so on and so forth. There is a lot of things, if you get creative, that you can use with contractor bags. Speaking of cleaning things up and everything else, you want to make sure that you have safety goggles. Safety goggles are a must in a cleanup mode because you don't know what you're dealing with. And this is the one time when I would actually advise people to wear a mask after the storm, especially if you're dealing with insulation that's been blown in your yard or whatever else or came off your roof. Having a good mask, you want to start with an N95. If you have the money, yes, buy a respirator or whatever else. You do not want to be breathing those fibers in. You will not like the end. All right? <clears throat> and least but not last, make sure that you do have plenty of batteries to power all your different flashlights, devices, and everything else. And this way here, it'll make it a lot easier for you to weather the storm. One more thing. Follow me over here. All these things right here, all these little things over here, are what they call hurricane shutters. Now those are metal. What you have to be very careful of when you are dealing with those metal hurricane shutters are, they are sharp on the edges. So if you are installing them, you wanna make sure that you are wearing a pair of gloves so you do not cut your hands. You wanna do that well before the storm hits. Don't wait until it's almost here and you're outside trying to handle one of these panels and the winds are blowing at 30, 40 miles an hour. It's not going to be fun, and there's a good chance that somebody's going to get hurt. So you want to make sure that you're doing those type of preparations now before the storm gets here. This way here you stay safe, everybody stays healthy, and everybody will be able to ride out the storm. And you know what? That's the name of the game. So like I said, this is a hurricane preparedness video. It's coming to Florida right now. But everybody up the East Coast, we don't know where it's going. So you want to make sure that you're being prepared. Anybody that lives in any type of a hurricane-prone area, these products 
are all just some of the things that you may need. You may need to have more. You may need to have stuff different. It depends on where you live. You also can use a lot of these different products for a lot of different scenario disaster type system. So let's just take for a moment and talk about blizzards and snowstorms and ice storms and all these different things. We've seen what has happened throughout history and how people don't have power and everything else. All these products here will apply to any situation that you could be facing. So I am Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. And until next time, I will catch all of you on the flip side.